Morning, go, or evening, grass, brother, and sisters. Good to see everybody back home with us here uh, with the Word Awakening and our revival preaching, finishing up our revivalist biographies, but I believe literally doing it with a bang, looking at Billy Sunday. I think if there's one word that could be uh, kind of like one expressive word that could be affiliated with Billy Sunday, it would be bang. You just see them pictures and all of him, like throwing his fist up when he preached and everything. I think it's very appropriate. And so do look forward to looking at uh, the life of Brother uh, Billy Sunday here in our uh, sketch of Revival Spiofies, as I said, finishing it up here. And uh, by way of announcements, uh, as we just said, today will be our last day for the Revivalist uh, biographies, and uh, this will be a, in a book, or maybe I should say a booklet, of uh, what we're going to be putting out. It's not going to be extremely extensive, but we're going to make that available, though. A sketch Revivalist biography is going to be publishing that very soon. Hopefully, like uh, one day the uh, the next week, along with a couple of other things, and we'll certainly announce when those are available. And here with a word awakening with our revival preaching, going to do a few kind of a standalone messages. Um, we were going to start another series, but the Lord has led us at least first to look at some uh, standalone type messages. Like next week, we're going to be looking at heartbreak. You know, like uh, things about being discouraged. Going to be looking at that. And then we'll be, uh, I know we're also going to be looking at a biblical lady, like what a biblical lady is. We're going to look at that at least one day as well in a, a couple of weeks. And then, uh, you know, we'll see how the Lord leads after that. We're going to at least have a couple, though, of standalone, uh, you know, type messages. And so we look forward to uh, those as well. And we'll be starting in Psalm 41 with our midweek preaching and prayer the next time we meet here. And also, we're going to be uh, looking at, uh, with Temperance Awakening, like we've mentioned, I'm going to start that in a week or two, at least like by the by the first week of November, get started. Uh, we're going to be looking at some things with uh, tobacco, like with uh, what people call snuff, dip, or spit tobacco. I'm going to be looking at that with Temperance Awakening, and then after that, we'll probably get started with our uh, pornography lectures, which is next in line. So you pray for us. And a look as we do these things here. Of course, me and my family always desire your prayers as we make endeavors to get this last bit of support raised uh, to move to New York State here in a few months. So you be praying for us that God would use us for his honor and for his glory. And uh, so that's our announcements. And of course, keep praying for my wife who's having some abdomen pain, as well as my daughter who's sick. She actually still has strep. She's had some difficulty taking medicine. She hates taking medicine. And the initial one that they gave her was horrible. And so they gave her a pink bubblegum flavor that's more appealing to children. And so she has took that by <laughs> by us, uh, by us, real literally making her take it. But uh, pray for my daughter Ruth, wife Jennifer as well. Well, that to God would be with uh, me and my family, as well as all the needs that you have as well. I know there are many out there, as we'll sort of be praying one for another. And uh, with all that being said, we'll read a verse of Scripture here, then we'll get into the life of Billy Sunday, read a verse of Scripture, then we'll have a word of prayer, and then uh, we'll uh, bring this message here that God has given us, looking at the life of Billy Sunday. First, looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse number 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And our Father, we sure do love you this uh, afternoon. We're so thankful for the goodness of sin and uh, for, uh, for allowing us to come back and to gather in your name and to meet. And we are very, very thankful for, uh, for allowing us to, uh, to come together over the cyberways. Just pray that you'd add your blessing to the reading of your word. And just help us, Lord, as we uh, make endeavors here to preach your word. Pray that we do the life of Brother Sunday justice. And be with the needs, be with our family. Pray that we get this last bit of support raised. And pray that you'd be with uh, my wife and daughter. Pray that you just touch them and their ailments. As well as all the needs that our dear listeners have. All the physical needs, financial needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs. That you save that one lost. Uh, uh, that you'd encourage to discourage and reclaim the backslid. Work on hearts and souls, Lord, as only you can. You don't always stand in need of, Lord. Uh, maybe just do what you'd have us do and be what you'd have us to be, Lord. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory for all because you long for it. in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. We pray all these things. Amen and amen. And I did fail to mention as well, this is also actually uploaded on Temperance Awakening uh, because Billy Sunday was a uh, was a prohibitionist, was a major advocate for prohibition. And so we wanted to particularly also upload that there because, you know, a lot of people that are familiar with temperance and prohibition, uh, they're, uh, they know that our Brother Sunday is a very, uh, very affiliated with that movement, and we're going to, uh, you know, look at some, kind of give a brief overview, at least, of what he did there. And so William Ashley Billy Sunday lived November 19, 1862, until November 6, 1935. He was born near Ames, Iowa. His parents were William Sunday, the son of German immigrants, and Mary Jane Carey. 
The family was very poor, and William Sunday died just five weeks after Preacher Sunday was born. When Sunday was ten years old, his impoverished mother sent him and an older brother to live in an orphanage. At the orphanage, Sunday attended, um, uh, Sunday attained, rather, attained orderly habits, a, uh, a decent primary education, and the realization that he was a good athlete. In 1880, Sunday relocated to Marshalltown, Iowa. He was recruited by a fire brigade team, worked odd jobs, and played for the town baseball team. <coughs> Sunday got into professional baseball thanks to future Hall of Famer and Marshallton native Cap Anson. Anson recommended A.G. Spaulding, the president of the Chicago White Stockings, to sign Sunday. Sunday's greatest asset was his speed. In 1885, he was named the fastest runner in pro baseball. <coughs> and, uh... Because of Sunday's speed, he was always among the league's leaders in stolen bases. Sunday's personality also made him very popular with the fans. He became the White Stockings business manager, which included duties such as handling ticket, handling ticket receipts, and uh, paying the team's financial ex travel expenses. On a Sunday afternoon in Chicago, Sunday and several of his teammates were out on the town on their day off. At a, at a uh, street corner, they stopped to listen to preaching from the Pacific Garden Mission. And Sunday began attending services at the mission. The Holy Ghost began convicting Sunday. After Sunday struggled with the Holy Ghost for a while, he submitted and got saved. Following his conversion, Sunday denounced drinking, swearing, and gambling. His character changed drastically. And see, that's what happens once again when somebody gets saved. That's repentance. Uh, like we read 2 Corinthians 5.17, opening up, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Then we can look at Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 6. Galatians 5.6, the Bible says, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. <clears throat> See, we have faith there that works by love. <clears throat> There's a change in us. Then uh, Galatians 6, 15. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. See, there's a new creature when you're in the Lord Jesus Christ. See, and this is certainly how much Billy Sunday changed in the spring of 1891. Sunday turned down a baseball contract for $3,500 a year, which was, of course, a lot more money then than it is now, to accept a position with the YMCA for only $83 a month. Sunday's title at the YMCA was assistant, was assistant Secretary, yet the position involved a great deal of ministerial work. For three years, Sunday visited the sick, prayed with the trouble, counseled the suicidal, and visited saloons to invite patrons to evangelistic meetings. In 1893, Sunday became the full-time assistant to J. Wilbur Chapman, of course, who was one of America's most well-known evangelists at the time. My brother Chapman himself was previously uh, like a protege to D.L. Moody. And Sunday learned a great deal about the ministry by assisting Brother Chapman. In 1896, Chapman returned to pastoring a church, and Sunday went out on his own as an evangelist. The following 12 years, Sunday preached in approximately 70 communities. Sunday's wife, Helen Amelia Nell, and that was the name that she went by, became his administrative assistant. Sunday preached and promoted fundamental doctrines, such as biblical inerrancy, the virgin birth of Jesus, the doctrine of substitutionary atonement, the bodily resurrection of Jesus, a literal devil, and a literal hell, and the imminent return of Christ. And look at uh, 1 Timothy 4.6. Of course, these, uh, you know, encourage us that doctrine does matter. You know, doctrine certainly does matter, and we need to promote biblical doctrine. I guess what the Apostle Paul told Timothy, like in 1 Timothy 4.6, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and verses 14 and 15. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which were able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in, Jesus, which is in Christ Jesus. 
The preacher was also an ardent champion of temperance. From his earliest days as an evangelist, he saw the destruction of alcohol. His most famous sermon, Get on the Water Wagon, was against alcohol. Sunday aroused public interest in prohibition and the passage of the 18th Amendment in 1919. When prohibition was repealed in 1933, uh, Sunday called for its, for its reintroduction. Some of Sunday's most famous quotes were, I am the sworn, eternal, and uncompromising enemy of the liquor traffic. I have been and will go on fighting that damnable, dirty, rotten business with all the power at my command. Also said, I believe in temperance from the bottom of my feet to the top of my head. And said, beer and liquor are all right in their place, but their place is in hell. And wonderful quotes. We also see that in the scriptures as well. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. And beside this, giving all diligence into your faith, virtue, to virtue knowledge, and a knowledge temperance, and a temperance patience, and a patience godliness. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 1. Proverbs 21, the Bible says, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. And see if... You're not going to be wise, you're going to be foolish. You know, there are just two things that you can be in the Bible, wise or foolish. Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah 28, 7. But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink, or out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink, they are swallowed up of wine. They're out of the way through strong drink, they err in vision, they stumble in judgment. Hosea chapter 4. Jose 4.11 says, Hoard them in wine and new wine. Take away the heart. So certainly appreciate the life of Billy Sunday. Did a lot of preaching. Did a lot of good stuff. Was very bold against sin. And very true to the word of God. So great example for us. Amen. Stay true to God. Stay true to your convictions. Don't compromise those convictions for anything. Amen convictions that God puts on you. And so thank you so much for being here with us today. And as I said, we'll uh, be looking at a couple of standalone messages uh, here in the uh, following weeks. Come back and be with us next week. We'll be looking at uh, discouragement, how to deal with discouragement and heartbrokenness. And so we certainly do look forward to that. And uh, with our uh, midweek uh, prayer and preaching, we'll be starting Psalm 41. So you keep us in your prayers as we're praying for everybody out there that we'd all be faithful. Amen. And do what the Lord would have us to do and be what the Lord would have us to, de to be. And for now, we'll close in prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the answer of sin. We're so thankful, Lord God, for our salvation and for allowing us to come back and meet over the cyberways for this ministry and just pray that you'd be with us and bless us and just provide us, Lord, with all that we need to do your work and to do your will and just continue, Lord God, to work on hearts and souls, to help hearts and souls. Bless our dear listeners. You know each and every need of each and every heart. Just pray that you'd meet those needs, the spiritual needs, that you'd save the lost, encourage the discouraged, reclaim the backslid, that you'd just provide financially. And just be with all emotional needs and all that people stand in need of, Lord God. Those that are holding grudges, those that uh, might uh, be hurt or in pain, I just pray that you'd encourage them and help them, Lord God. And just continue to guide and direct all of us. And use us, Lord, for your honor and for your glory. And most certainly be careful to give you all, all the praise and all the glory for all because of you, Lord. For it's in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. Amen. Anyway, thank you so much, folks, for being with us. We'll see you next time. Until the day break in the shadows, flee away. I'm Dr. Coop, and I love you, and I appreciate you.